So, hey, guys, you're listening to another episode of the Real Estate Wholesaling Syndicate podcast, where we give you real tactical information on how you can take your business to the next level. And today, I am very excited to bring this guest on today. And so you can share his story, some of the cool stuff that he's doing. I don't really see anybody else talking about. Uh, so today we have Dave Z with us. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Yeah, Kai, man, I appreciate you having me on. I know I'm not the world's biggest wholesaler, but hopefully I can spring some value with what I've been doing the last 20 years. I love that, man. Yeah, I think, you know, really my whole strategy is looking at what other people are doing. I'm always looking for gold nuggets and different things I can take away and implement. And sometimes even other industries completely outside of real estate, you can find things you can apply. So, but no, I love it. Um, So I know we talked a bit and shared some of the stuff we were doing. I didn't want to get too in depth for it because I kind of wanted to learn on our conversation today more about what you're doing. Um, But before we kind of get into all the fun stuff, uh, do you want to give us a quick intro on, on who Dave Z is? Yeah, for sure. So uh, first and foremost, married, father of five. I got four daughters, uh, a son, and I've been doing real estate for 20 years. So they've had to watch their dad, you know, be, be in this grind their whole childhood. And a lot of what I'll talk about today is how I wanted to be so fully present with these kids and still do a lot of real estate and the challenges I've had. But uh, 20 years of doing this, thought I was going to go to med school. So I went to college. Um and just took a different turn thanks to my wife who was like do you are you are you going to medicine because you like have a passion for it or you want to make money i'm like i just want to make money <laughs> she's like then don't do it and you know by 26 we had to rerun our properties so we really dove into that and uh i've sold about a half a billion dollars of real estate sold about 1500 houses um uh, went from you know being a solo agent to a team of 13 back down to a very lean solo agent with a ton of leverage so that is like my that's my world is leverage. How do we leverage out all this stuff we don't like to do? And really what the play, we were talking about before we went live here, like I might take some kids to Disney here. You know, we just, we were in Italy for two weeks. Like I just want to get on a plane and travel and live it now. And so how do I, how do I sell a lot of real estate and not have to be in the state of Arizona? So we talk about that, but that that's me in a nutshell. I love that. Yeah. Cause I feel like that's really the goal. That's why everyone gets into entrepreneurship or whatever they get into is for you know, freedom. And uh, it is, but I feel like so, so many people are just waiting once I hit this milestone or once I get to this certain level of income or once, you know, I hire these people, then there's always another thing. So there's yep. always another milestone and it feels like then one day you just, you die and it could be tomorrow. You die, dude. Fucking and, or you lose your health. Like, right. Mm-hmm. I was just in a three day conference that I didn't know what I was getting into. And it was good. Um, uh, he actually, the speaker spoke at an event I was at. I thought he was dynamic. I'm like, I want to go to his three-day event. Well, little did I know, it was like 8 a.m. till midnight, dude, every yeah. night. And we went deep into like, it was NLP, personal development, like knowing your why. Mm-hmm. And when you're in a room with 300 people from 8 to midnight, we're all sharing, you, the overwhelming why was I want better relationships. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to love myself more. I want deeper relationships and you're right, dude. Everyone's just waiting to get to this destination. And uh, it's funny. I spoke to a client. I've helped her buy like 13 houses. She's worth like 15 million and she's still working. And I just let, asked her straight up. I'm like, what would you do if you had two days to live? Are you going to go back to work? You're going to work double shifts owning your own business. She's just right. This is how she's wired. She's like, oh, Dave, I, I'd go. I'd go see my sister in Peru and I'd go see this family member, this family member. And and I just I was like, listen, I think you're probably worth 15 million. I'm, I'm taking a stab at it. You think you're going to run out of that money in the next five years, 10 years when you have like the perfect triangle of like time, money and health. Now's your window because one of those is going to go away. Mm. And, and there was a gal who I sat next to me a lot at this event. She's 57. All she wanted her why was to be not be in pain anymore. And her ankle was swollen and scarred up and she's had all these surgeries and she's in daily pain. 
And dude, we're so when we're when we're living in that triangle of like health, time, and money, you never know how long that's gonna last. So that's kind of my MO is my wife's like, really you want to do Disney again? I'm like, well, what if in a week I can't? Mm. Right. So there's this like go live it now as long as you have the money, as long as right. you have the systems in place. Because I really take that approach. Like I could be like her and I've been there. I've had five back surgeries where I'm like, I can't go to Disney unless I'm in a scooter. Like my kids that watch me be in a scooter. Right. And they're they're like, that's so embarrassing. I'm like, my back won't handle it. So so that's really of how I've designed my business is how can I do this now? Right. So that yeah. so hopefully some people who are listening can take away how to do that. So because I've been pretty innovative in, in the residential real estate to be able to do that. I love that. Yeah. So let's dive into it so people can start doing it. Cause I think that's the whole thing. And um really I feel like if you're like Dave's client, you're listening. You're probably not. Uh, it's probably this is most of our audience is newer people, but I mean, you can still, even if you're not there, you can still be present, like, you know, and do things with your family now and just do things now. Cause you just, again, tomorrow's not a promise. So just making sure, you know, you're keeping, keeping your why at the forefront and then just making sure you're not waiting for this imaginary date or, or timeline for, to start doing things. Yeah. But I love it, man. So yeah, what's that? Let's talk about what, what does leverage mean to you? For sure. Yeah. So, and one thing I'm going to throw out there is a book that changed my life was, have you ever read the book Die With Zero? No. Dude, that's, that book changed my life. Die With Zero. Now it's written by a guy with a ton of money. Like he gets into his birthday story, like for his birthday, he was a Wall Street guy. He flew in like a major band, a band we've all heard of. He paid for everybody to fly out to the islands, paid for their suite. So we're talking a multi-million dollar birthday event. So it's not for poor people. So when you die with zero, it's about die like knowing your number all right i need 10 million i need 12 million you get you but but you stop as soon as you can and you enjoy it along the way mm. so like our trip to italy i'll be able to think of for the rest of my life if i waited till i'm 70 when am i gonna you know what i mean like it's so it's about banking these memories now and once i got really in tune with that it helps you figure stuff out you're like so how do i live that life how do i design it so what leverage means to me because i've done it in so many different ways is I wanted maximum leverage with maximum freedom. And the way I obtain that is through, my biggest key is virtual assistants in the Philippines, mm. okay? Because when I had a team at 13 in America, I'd be taking them to Disneyland. I would be pouring into them. And it's not that I don't pour into my people over there, but it's a different relationship. Like when we're in the same city and we can go to happy hour tomorrow, uh, or you could pop by my house, because I was very open. I mean, I, I had 24 year olds in my house crying right? Because I just kind of, I love to pour into people. But when you set these boundaries of like, you're not, and again, we're talking resident, residential real estate. So these are a lot of realtors, right? Or vendors, you just get into a different relationship. So I wanted, I wanted help without deep relationships. Mm. And, and I think if you're running a team, even wholesalers, right? Like you, you just get into this like family style setting, right? We're like, dude, we're like a family. It's great until it starts to like, step on your real family right? right where my kids are like you're going to disney for the fourth time with your team i'm like oh it's a great team building event right and so i was getting leverage with a ton of restrictions and a ton of time and i was pouring into people so i said you know what i'm gonna stop pouring into like young realtors and i started hiring the help that i needed and it was such a clear relationship like i pay you a very good wage for the philippines and you do this work and once the clock is off we're done and so what it allowed me to do is like stack people's schedules to where I have continual coverage for what I need without having asked people, ask people to go the extra mile and do things for me. So, you know, if you look at the traditional real estate team, the way we're taught in like the MREA book, right? Gary Keller and all these books is like become a rainmaker, get so busy that you can hire people. And then you get a buyer's agent, a listing coordinator and a director of ops and all of these, but that leverage is super expensive. Mm. One, it's American-based salaries. Two, you're giving up commissions. So there was a time where I stepped out of production and all I was was running the company. But I was giving up so much of the compensation, right? And so now, flash forward to today, I keep about 96% of the commission with buyers that I never meet in person. I never open a door. So wow. if you're a wholesaler, like I've, I've converted, not converted, but I've, I've, I've worked with like just all off market people. They're like, all I do is off market. I'm like, cool. What if we could get you an extra, like, what if you were passing up 15 transactions just because you control this inventory, just because you have people that are coming and going and you've got these houses, 
or you have people in your life like, hey, man, you're in real estate. Like, no, nah, that's not really what I do. What I do is this. So I've coached uh, off market experts to pick up an extra two, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars of deals that were just slipping through their fingers. And by showing them, hey, you don't have to go to the property. You actually don't have to be in Arizona. So I'm booking hopefully a trip here. Like once we get off this call, I told you this is like the last thing I'm doing today. I have four buyers going out to look at properties today, but not with me. So my leverage became like, do the work, but let's not get intimately involved, right? And so it, it would be like any other company. It'd be like, and, you know, obviously we're not on the scale right now. I don't mean to compare it, but can you imagine if Elon Musk had to know the intimate lives of every Tesla employee? It would be unmanageable, right? So he has leverage. Jeff Bezos has massive leverage, but he's detached from mm -hmm. just a few core people. And I think that's what we can run as realtors is more of a, a distribution. So I'm kind of confusing your your listeners. So I want to go like kind of into my model. Real yeah, quick. let's do it. Yeah, let's kind of and just kind of break down that if you could do like the traditional model, like how real, yeah. real estate, like how it looks for a traditional one and then how you flip the script on it. Yeah, for sure. So like when I was a solo agent, once I hit about 50 some units, I was great money, but you're gone. Your kids are like, who's that guy again? Right. Cause you got to figure if you're going to, if you're going to sell 50 residential transactions, the average realtor is going to have to meet with 120 to 150 people who are like, Dave, I want to work with you. You know, we're, we're, we're definitely going to work with you. Show them houses. Like, you know what? we got transferred to Oklahoma. You know, Hey, our credit didn't come through. So to get 50 across the finish line, I mean, just think of the volume you have to, you have to do. So you're, you're maxed out around 50 before you're losing your life. So I got to that point and then they're like, go build a team. This is what every major brokerage is going to teach you. And you typically start to bring on other realtors to hand those deals off. Like, hey, Kai is moving to Arizona. I need you to work with him because I'm busy over here. So in the, like, if you go by the Gary Keller million, Millionaire Real, Real Estate Agent book, the MREA book, it's going to teach you to start adding you know, your assistants, your coordinators, but then to really go big, you're adding realtors. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. So I grew that to 13. And great. I got freedom back, but here's what nobody will tell you is when you build that out, you're going to start keeping about 10% of the total deal. You're going to bring in $4 million and keep 400 grand, or your typical realtor is going to bring in a million and keep like a hundred grand. And they're like, where did all my money go? You know, you start giving 50% to the realtors that you're paying staff, you're paying ads. And when it all shakes out, you know, everybody's trying to chase a 30% net. Very few people do it. Like when I audit their business, I got a coaching call with a new agent on Monday. I need his PL. I need his tax returns. Like, I, I want to see what's going on. And the average realtor is not keeping what they need to once they start to leverage through other people in the in the current system, right? So the you're handing off deals like Kai, I need you to work this Saturday. So for that, you keep 50%. I keep 50, but my business expenses are 35% of the net, right? So I'm only keeping 15%, maybe, right? So that's the traditional. So what I did once COVID hit was got rid of all those people. And the the key, the, the two key components are virtual assistants in the Philippines that mimic me. So if you are, you and I are working together, like I just saw it this morning, I can kind of keep an eye on it. Somebody said, Dave, we're in town. We had, like we had talked about two weeks ago, we want to go see these four properties. My virtual assistants, and they take shifts. So I have like seven day a week coverage said, Kai, I got your message. I see these are the forums you want to see. Tell me exactly what time. I saw you responded at noon. Great. We'll set it up. They'll schedule the showings for me. This is what I can teach wholesalers to do. They'll schedule the showings. And then we have 1,500 realtors in the Valley that will show homes for 40 bucks a door. And it's a national company called Shawami. So if you're listening out there, like Google Shawami, that company is owned by a guy named Matt Kuchar. They've got about 125,000 agents that have signed up for their service. They will open up a door within an hour's notice. So when I consult with people, I just did one yesterday. I was like, this is what I do. I'm your pilot. I fly the airplane, but I don't serve the drinks. I don't gas it up and I don't load the luggage. And because I don't do that, I can sell a lot more real estate. So you know what's going on in the market better than the average realtor. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to empower you to make a decision, but you're going to go see home seven days a week. Never hear the word no for me. You know how many realtors have to tell their clients no? Oh, I, I'm out of town. Oh, I'm at with another client. Oh, like I have soccer practice. So the consumers just get sick of hearing no. That's why they go to Zillow and they click on see this home now, mm -hmm. right? So if you can position yourself as a 
Go see this home on demand seven days a week. And I'm your expert negotiator. I will tell you, you'll bat about 99.99% where the cons consumer is like, that's what we want. I mean, I can think of like one time in two years, someone's like, oh yeah, if you're not going to be at every show me, then I want to work with you. That was like one mm -hmm. out of hundreds and hundreds of, of closed escrows. Most of them say that would be amazing. So once I was able to pair that together, I was literally able to step out of the business in the busy work. And I use the analogy of like Starbucks. We've all been to Starbucks or all, at least we know what they are. My saying is like, stay at the cash register. And the cash register is where the money is made. It's on the phone, it's doing consultations, it's lead generating, and it's prospecting. And you just don't go transact the real estate. You let other licensed realtors open the door. You let your virtual assistants manage that. You stay focused on your sole mission. So here's what's crazy. Like, this is what I've figured out in my business. If I set one appointment a day, and that's all I do except for my consults, I can sell 90 houses in a year. That's a lot of coin. I mean, it's yeah. a it's a seven-figure business. If you're like, today, all I'm doing is setting a new appointment, and then I'll let those appointments go see houses with other people. And you could scale it like crazy. I've had as many as eight buyers out at once. How, how, how would you do that in any other setting, right? Right. Once you, once you clearly articulate your value to the consumer, my value is this. It's negotiating, getting the best terms, making sure this goes smoothly, no anxiety for you on demand with me. You can always get a hold of me and somebody else does the showing and they agree to it. You can work with as many people as you want. And it's it's variable versus hiring salary people. So we have a variable business like in wholesale, off market or, or what, what I'm doing in residential. It's variable, right? I can mm -hmm. sell 12 homes in a month and zero the next month. And by really reducing my salaries to the lowest cost possible and then keeping my showings at a variable, I can I could take two months off and not have a big overhead or I can I go crazy, that. right? So it, I think this is the way, Kai, that real estate is going. I've coached mm -hmm. over 100 realtors on this now, and it, there's an appetite for it. Right. right. People want that, that freedom of location. Like, do you tell me I can go to the beach for a week and still sell real estate? Yeah. You can go visit your kids in college. So I'm excited to bring it to the community. And, I, and, and yeah. I'm excited to see how you guys, because when I share this, there's smart people are going to be like, well, how do I do this in wholesale? And you and I know people that astro flip, right? And do wholesaling all across virtually. Yeah, we do virtual um, flipping here. And that's one of the things I wanted to touch on before we go on. Um, there's a few good uh, gold nuggets there um, that I really liked that I wanted to address in case anybody missed it. Um, but I love how you're pre-framing the conversation uh, with your client. You're letting them know, hey, here's what's going to happen. I think that's why you're not getting those objections like, oh, why aren't you there? And any of those things. So a lot of people don't frame things correctly and that's well, why you get a lot of objections and that's why like people because and people have objections and sometimes they're just questions because they don't understand but when you yeah. set the agenda and you frame it um nine times out of ten even more than that you're gonna avoid those yeah and you get their permission right i'm not like i just flat out like a guy from college hit me up yesterday and uh, i barely knew him but we went to college together and he follows me on social media and we had an hour and a half long consult and i was like if you don't like this that's okay. And I know other realtors, mm -hmm. like I'm just straight up, like, you know, when people say, well, what if they don't do it, then you don't have enough people to talk to. Right. Because I'm not going to let one person jeopardize my life. Right. I'll, I'll let that one go away. Mm -hmm. And so you, I said, this is how I frame it. You know, I, I am big on language and, and sales. And, and so I would say, Kai, now that you've heard that, is there any reason you wouldn't want to work with me? Is there any reason that wouldn't work? And I mm -hmm. want them to say, Dave, that that totally makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So getting their permission. And you're right, dude. I, I've i seen instances where I've coached people on this and they they weren't all in and it, it blows up in their face. And then I look into their messaging. And I'm like, well, here's the problem. You flat out lied to them. You told them on Friday that you would show them the house on Saturday. And then on Saturday, you said, I can't make it. John's going to make it. I'm like, what are you doing? You had, mm -hmm. they, you had no intention on showing it to them. You just got to be bold enough to say, this is how it's going to be. And so when people try to coddle around it, it just blows up. Right. You know, I hear the, hey, it might be me. It might be somebody else. And all you're saying to them is, if somebody else is more important than you, I'm going to go do that. Right. So once I just drew that line in the sand, I was like, it's never me. 
like, and I just got super clear and I'm convicted on it and I know it's for their benefit. And I think that's where people are like, oh, I'm not sure if it's for their benefit, but dude, I don't even go to home inspections or final walkthroughs and that's for their benefit. And I think I have a lot of realtors that tell me, oh, you're, you're doing a disservice. I'm like, I think the kindest thing I could do to, to a human being is not be there to add sales pressure to, to the mix. Like where I'm standing there, like, oh, this isn't a big deal. Oh, we can fix that repair. Like, I think the majority of realtors go there to protect their commission. So I flat out tell them, um, my one hour Zoom gives me all the freedom I want because I set up all the expectations. Like I won't be there for this. And then if we do repairs, I'm not going to be there either to sign off on it. Do you want the only guy who gets a paycheck when it closes to sign off on the repairs? Or right. would you spend $75 to have my home inspector come back out and re-verify that? They're like, that's what we want. So I get myself out of all of these by positioning it as a benefit. And it is. And I'll just have some realtors disagree with me. And, and that's fine. They think it's self-serving. But my message is I don't sell houses. I empower people to buy them and I make it easy for them. And I'm an expert negotiator and I'll guide them through it, but buy or don't buy cancel yeah. or don't cancel. Right. They can feel that I'm like detached from the process because I'm not there every step of the way. Like, Oh, is this going to close? And when you're only closing 10 to 10 or 12 deals, like the average realtor, you want to be there to make sure it closes. Yeah. No, so, yeah. Uh, the first house we purchased, we took a couple of realtors awful experience and, um, yeah, it's funny because, yeah, I didn't really know anything about real estate at the time. Um, so I was listening to Bigger Pockets. So I'm like, oh, I just got to get a house, 1% rule, you know, all, all the common things you first learn. And, um, yeah, the realtor whole time, just, you tell it's like super hungry for the commission, just very desperate. And it's just like, it's it's so off putting, like being the it client. Is. And like literally at closing, at the closing table, and there's a few other things too, like a bunch of like looking back. But at closing, she literally asked the title company, like, what, so what, when do I get my check? Like, when do I get paid? Mm -hmm. I'm like, there, <laughs> I, it's crazy, man. This, this is why this industry gets a bad rap. It, it rightfully so. I think it's a noble industry. I think what we do, uh, it's the most important thing ever. Like this is how you build wealth. This is yeah. how you do not end up broke like many people. So real estate's so dang important and I believe in it. Uh, so I'm passionate about it. Like I, I will convince people to buy real estate when I know it's the best thing for them. And right. they're green because I've got some amazing stories of, of, you know, people thanking me because their dad was getting involved or this or that. And, and I'll have a hard conversation, but it's never, it really isn't for me, mm -hmm. right. It's for them. But it, this industry has a lot of people who are broke and greedy. Let's just be honest. Um, and there's some good, I think there's a lot of us that are good, but I'll tell you my best example of like guiding somebody into real estate was an anesthesiologist out of the army. So he had money, right? I knew he had money. He was, his base salary was like 250 grand just starting at this firm. And I love to do a consult, Kai, where I go deep into the why. I'm like, why are we moving? And I ask it like five times. Okay, but no, that sounds great, Kai, but like, why? Oh, now's the right time. Why? I'm like, I, I know I sound like I'm stupid, but what, how is this going to change your life? And I want to hear the life changing reason because there usually is, but mm -hmm. on surface, it's going to be, we just rather own than rent. We would just rather build some equity. We would just rather have control of our house. Now's the right time. It's all the right answer, but there's something so deep Deeper, there that yeah. they don't want to share. Right. So I, I'm pretty good at getting people to open up and go, why? And you know, you've done it when they go, can I be honest with you? Right. You're like, here we go. Love it. And he was like, dude, I got two boys, Samuel and Nathaniel, Sam and Nate. They're our little prophets, you know, named them after the prophets in the Bible. Those boys have bug out bags by their door. They have only known chaos and moving and moving and moving. And it's time for it to, to get them settled. And he was not a young kid, right? He's mm. an army doctor. So this is right when the market in Phoenix dipped 12%, right? Interest rates started to spike. The market came down. It was right before that. It was like August. And, and rates came up, what, May of 22? Mm -hmm. So we're talking August. I see his searches all go to rentals, dude. We're showing him houses. We're showing him houses. Now I'm seeing rentals, rentals, rentals. He's like, hey, we're going to put this on pause. Talk to my dad. He thinks the market's going to fall. I don't think he's wrong. I think we're going to rent for a year or two. It's settled. I don't need his commission, right? I mean, that year I closed like $1.2 million of commission. I made a good year. And I'm like, that's fine, dude. Let's get on a call. And I got on a call with him. And, and I just said, listen, do what you want. It's totally fine. I just, as a man, to, to man to man, father to father, 
when are you going to take that bug out bag out of those boys' hands and give them what they need as a father? Mm. He just started crying. Bought a house. Never had met him in person, only did Zooms with him. I ran into him at the mall. And we're like, bro. And he's giving me a big old bear hug. And he's like, dude, thank you so much. Like, he's so happy. He could afford it. Like, it, this was not me putting someone in a bad financial spot. But if I didn't really go deep in my consult and know what this meant to him, how am I going to help him? And, th- and that is my job is to help him. But if they can't afford it, you can't afford it. And right. so his name's Jeff. And we're always like, dude, let's get a beer together. Let's hang out. But now, in hindsight, he's on the home for two years. I think his 5.75 interest rate sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Compared yeah. to where we're at now. And the dude's made some equity. But more importantly, his kids are settled. Right. And I know what that means to be, right? And so... That's a, I think that applies to all of us, dude. We're all serving people. We're all helping people. Yeah. Uh, we got to know what's really at the heart of this to really influence people for the right way. 100%. Um, right? No, I love that. I think that that's so important to you. And I feel like a lot of people, if they haven't done sales before, they don't really have the sales back. You don't realize like a lot of people get a lot of anxiety when it's finally time to like pull the trigger and they get to that point and then they let other people get in their ear, whether it's a well-meaning family member or right. whatever. It's like very easy to let they get doubt creep in and then they just don't take the action. Even if they know deep down it's the right thing, um, it's just so easy for them to just stall. And yeah, it's usually why that happens. It is, man. And, and I know his dad had the right intention. I'm a dad of five. I'm going to be in their ear when they're going to buy, right? And so a good salesperson with a good heart and a good intention is is, is a really a gift to help people get through that, that uncertainty because it's hard, man. That was his first house. And you don't want to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, that was a good story. And I, I've got plenty like that, but I, I love being part of that when I know it's for the, the good of others, you know, best you and I know the best time to buy a house was 30 years ago. Don't we all wish we had paid off houses. Right. And so people will just delay for very silly reasons and, and in real estate, it's going to bite you in the butt when you keep delaying. Mm-hmm. Right. 100%. So, so yeah, man, leverage, like leverage is just the key to the life that we want. But if you're getting leverage the, in the old fashioned way, there's just, there's just, I would just say better or worse forms of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So I just have the gift of perspective of having like no leverage, getting a lot of leverage, but it was super expensive and then getting now to this form of leverage. And that's why I've rebranded myself as leverage agent, because I want to make change, man. I want my, my heart's for moms and dads. Like it is cool. I've got some kids that are in their twenties making like six, 700 grand a year. And that's cool. But what I love seeing is I've got testimonials of people who are like, I got my life back. I, mm. I get to be with my kids. I took all these vacations with them and that freedom to be with their kids. That's my, that's my passion is like, cause you got to decide, man, if you don't have leverage in my game, it's like 30 sales before you start self-sabotaging, right? You're just like, oh, like, hey, dad, what are we doing today? We're going to go to the zoo. Ring. You're like, oh, it's a sign call. Maybe we're not going to the zoo. But like, yeah. but, hey, buddy, I got to pay for your college. I got to pay for your wedding. So dad needs to take this call. You're like, yeah, I'll meet you at the property. And I've done that. I've left Memorial Day parties in my yard where I've got slides and barbecues going. And I'm like, I'm slipping out to go show a house, right? So... You 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 start to self sabotage and you don't even know it, right? You know, because you're mm-hmm. just like consciously, yeah. You're like this commission threatens what I really want, mm-hmm. so you're always going to gravitate towards your deepest desires, right? And and so now in this model, dude, I I have none of that. It never gets in the way. So I'm like, mm-hmm. go, go see house, go see houses, right? I love that. We end up going to Disney. I might write an offer, but it takes me two minutes to write an offer. And I do it through a video call. Uh, I just record my video, send it to my assistant. She writes the offer. So once you put all those things in place, sky's the limit. Yeah. No, I love that. I think it's it's crazy, like how almost outdated, can't think of a better word, that you know traditional real estate is, or even more so wholesaling, just as far as like systems and using leverage or using automations, using VAs. I mean, there's so many other industries do it with such success. And it's just almost like such an old school mentality. I feel like that you have to be the one there and to shake the hands and you got to knock the doors and you're going to get all your first deal. You're going to get all your deals just on referrals and don't pay yeah. ads, don't do any kind of leverage. And it's like, it, it sounds awful. You literally just, you're creating a prison for yourself. And you, you just- are, you can make good money, but you are. Yeah. And I think that 
The biggest shift for me too, because this sounds easy on the buyer side, it's much more accepted, but I shifted to sellers uh, two summers ago. Mm -hmm. And I think, so that was my first summer really testing it out. We were on the East coast, you know, so we're in Arizona where it gets 175 degrees in the summer and everything dies. We leave, uh, we go up to Maine, we go up to Massachusetts, we go up to that part of the country. And I'm like, I'm going to really test this on listings. Mm -hmm. And I did like 58, 59,000 of listing commissions that, that month of July, all virtually, wow. all virtually. I was like, right, okay, this worked. And I honestly, I think COVID is what opened the door for that, like Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. So once you can say, hey, I know we're, we've been talking about selling your home, let's get on a Zoom call. And then we go through the whole process and we do my listing presentation, do all of that. And what helps me is I have a five step listing, I have a five option listing presentation. Right. And so I'm like, I can wholesale your home. I can pay cash for it. I can joint venture fix and flip it for you. So my crew can come in and flip it. We'll split it. And then I charge you a 9% listing. You'll make all the upside and I'll be your hard money lender. So I offer that. I'm like, we could do just your traditional MLS. Which of these works for you? So once you start doing that virtually, people are like, dude, I just want a cash offer. Boom. Now I send a, a contractor out there. Right. I'm like, great. Next step is this person's coming. Oh, I think we want to do the fix and flip, like joint venture contractors coming out. I really think we want to do a, uh, just the traditional MLS. Great. I'm going to have my runner come out, take a look at the house, do some photos, send them back to me. Then we'll get together back on another Zoom call. As soon as you say, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people are like, well, well, when do you come out? You, they don't say that because you're like, this is who's coming out. And this is the process. And you just say it confidently. So once I get my photographer out there, they're going to shoot some pictures, send it back to me. We're going to take some notes. I'm going to have my, my auditors, what we call them. So the auditor is going to come out. They're an expert at kind of looking at the house and all that. Once it gets back to me, I'm going to have all the material. I'm going to know your exact odds of selling. I'm going to give you your absorption rate. I'll give you your price and we'll jump back onto the call. And we get on the Zoom. They're like, sounds good. Let's do it. So once you, so even listings, you don't have to go out to the house. Because mm -hmm. I mean, how many houses are you going out to on the on the homes that you're part of? Do you go no, out to all of them? No, yeah. no, I don't go any. Yeah, like if I can avoid it, like they're like real like old timer. They're down the street. Like once in a while, I might. But yeah, no, I, I yeah, I try to avoid it like the plague. Yeah, we use uh, a lot of leverage, a little bit different. We use a lot of AI and automations, and uh, we do have VAs as well. But uh, yeah, no, it was kind of eye opening for me because the first same thing I tried to do it like everybody else was doing it. Recommended go out there, shake the hands, and I've have a I've been an entrepreneur for almost ten years. I'm like another my other businesses have I done this? Like, why am I doing this? And uh right. yeah, it's crazy when you stop going out and realize, hey, I don't have to. And then I'm like, wait, if I don't have to do it here, I can do it all over the country. Yep. Yep. I got an agent, I'm coaching, he's in 10 markets. Um, uh, that's hard for me to do a wholesaling for sure. Mm -hmm. or flipping, but I'm like, ooh, how do I guide somebody? in a market I've never been in. Is this a good school district? Is this like, you know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. some discomfort there where I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Like he's doing great. He's crushing it. Uh, but I'm like, ah, am I the best fit to help somebody buy a home in New York? I don't even know New York. You know what I mean? Uh, buying houses for sure. But like guiding, I'm a, and may, that could be a limiting belief for me, mm -hmm. right? Because I know the transaction. Do I really need to know that? Or can I put the onus back on them? Like, hey, this is what I'm great at. But if you want to know the best school districts, I could tell you the first four websites I would go to. If you want to know if it's a safe neighborhood, that's not for me to decide. Because, I mean, I've had break-ins in $2 million neighborhoods, right? Like, what's safe? Like, go to crime staff. So right. maybe there's so many beliefs on me that I'm, I'm not able to help people in other markets. I think so. Because honestly, a lot yeah. of uh, other agents won't tell you. I mean, because they're technically not supposed to tell you. Like, they're guide you in certain areas. So, I mean, I kept, when I know we were buying our first house, we kept getting like vague hints on why we shouldn't go there. And really like, right over my head, because I'm not, yeah, I'm like, I like to be straightforward and blunt. And like, that area yeah. is industrial, if you know what I mean. Like, no, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what does industrial mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah there you go. Sometimes I, I wonder if I'm getting tested because they, they'll like audit you and they'll try to get you for violations and people mm -hmm. just ask the, the dumbest questions. Not dumbest, but mm -hmm. like it's insulting. You're like, hey, do you know if there's these types of people that live over there? You're like, oh, man, like that's not even something we could talk about. Yeah. I, I want to make sure I'm close to this type of church. Are those are these types of people in those areas? You're like, are you testing me? Is this for like a HUD violation, you know, fair housing violation? Mm -hmm. So yeah. And I think on the like, consumer side, but you, most people don't even know, like at first, like until you get into real estate, that the real estate's not, uh, or the agent, the realtor's not allowed to tell you that stuff. So right. I think it's just like, Oh, like, why is this guy not telling me? But I think it's so much smarter to preframe it and like, here are the, 
here's how you can do your own research and learn about the area. Technically, I'm not allowed to steer you. Here's what you should go right. do. Yeah. Yeah. That, that has me thinking, you know, can I expand into other markets? Right. But you know, where my sales are at a great, like I'm not, I'm not at stage where I got to grow, 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 you know, mm -hmm. it, keep this sales volume and coach and teach as many agents as possible. And, and, you know, my passion now, what we're doing a lot of is we're training people's VAs for them. That's mm. the best. So I reached out to like a group of 30 agents here in, the, in Arizona. I'm like, Hey, you guys know, I crush it with VAs. Why don't you have a VA? And the number one answer was like, uh, I don't know where to find them, uh, what to pay them and how to train them. So I was mm. like, okay, that makes sense. I'm like, so if I, found them, gave you like 10 to interview, you pick the best one. And then I trained them for 80 hours. Would, would that be helpful? A hundred percent of the people on the call did it. So mm -hmm. my first month I'm onboarding a bunch of VAs, but that's what we're doing now. Kai is like, cause I think that is where people, that's where they get stuck. Yeah. Like sounds great, but now what? So, um, you know, that's how we'll help people. It's like, listen, I've got like hundreds of SOPs and videos and processes and we'll just take their VA for 80 hours. We'll train them. And then we give them like all the material, like here are all of my standard operating procedures on everything that I do. So that's my passion now is like empowering realtors to just like pick up my franchise, pick up my playbook, and then we'll train it and you go. And it's been super rewarding to watch people like just not have to go through the pain that I did. I mean, training people is not easy. Wouldn't you agree? It can be difficult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate it. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. It's frustrating and time consuming, and then hopefully you hire the right one and they, they stay. And it's uh. Yeah. That I think yeah, having those SOPs and those videos and doing those things is huge. Yeah. Yeah, man. But uh, no, I think that's great. I think yeah. So one only thing I wanted to touch on too uh, that I forgot was um. So show Ami. Um. Do you have to be a? Do you have to have your license to get on there? Well, that's a good question. That's a really good question. I don't know. I'll find out. Uh. You got to have your license, obviously, to go show. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you need a license to sign up. You know, because right. I know that's we've used it in the past. I don't remember if you had. That's what I was asking. Uh, but no, it's a great resource. I think it's super valuable for anyone. If you don't, you know, partner with a realtor who does, because I mean, if you're doing virtual stuff, you, know, you can literally have a realtor go out there, pay them. They can show your buyer, you know, the property, walk through. They have that little, you know, trust more, more trustworthiness over to some random person off Craigslist or off yeah. the streets because they have their license, they have their background checks and, you know, they have to, you know, they have ethical obligations. So I think that was a great yeah. tip you gave earlier. Yeah. I'm going to text, uh, I'm going to text the owner and, and, and see, I'm sure it's on their website, but mm -hmm. that, I know he says like the big companies, the big uh, property management companies are using them now. Okay. So I, I even use it in, I have 16 doors here in the Valley when I need stuff. Sometimes I just call them. If I can't get a hold of a of a handyman or a cleaner, I'll just I'll just hit Shalami. I'm like, I need you to go like do this and unlock this door, or, like kind of give them tasks. And yeah, we use it for our even pictures. Oh yeah, pictures, mm -hmm. right? Like, so if I have a tenant move out, because um, I do pad splits. Um, uh, did we talk about pad splits? We did off the call, but yeah, I'd love yeah. This, uh, if you love to, if you want to share it on here, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll give a two minute blurb on that. So like with pad splits. I'll, I'll need people out there more frequent. So pad splits only in like 16 markets, I think. I know it's, I started in Georgia, it's in Florida, it's in Arizona. I don't know all the markets, but it's basically a blend of verbos and long terms. And what I found was my long-term rentals for about 39,000. And, and, and what I, I just broke this down for a call of, for a bunch of realtors, I was showing them on pad splits. Cost me thirty nine thousand, right? To to take a four bedroom, two bath home that was generating about three thousand a month of rent, okay, and that was that was netting about nine hundred bucks a month of income, so that was my cash flow. I spent thirty nine to put two bedrooms in the garage with a mini split, AC mini split, a bedroom in the dining room, and a bedroom in the living room, and now I'm an eight bedroom, two bath home, and that. I just got paid on that yesterday. That property brought me a net income of six thousand dollars last month. Wow! So That's super cool. Your your rent it's it's a win win. Like it's cheap or not net income. I'm sorry, that was my top line income. Mm -hmm. So I went from about eight nine hundred a month to a net of thirty one hundred. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm more than three xing my income, and I'm going to get back that thirty eight thousand in sixteen months. That's like a sixty eight percent cash on cash return, right? 
And shoot, over the over a 10 year period, it makes me oh, like a quarter of a million dollars extra to, to build that build out. And you're covering the utilities, internet. And what's cool is you could go in it at any time, right? So if you've got like a long-term rental, like you got to get notice to go in there, right? We can walk in tomorrow because they have right to privacy in their rooms, but not the communal area. Mm. So we're changing the air filters every two weeks or every month. And my uh, cleaner is in there every two weeks. So even with a f- house cleaning and doing these things, I'm still bringing an extra 31, 3,100. And I get eyes on the property far more often. And then the tenants or members, as they call them, I mean, dude, they're, they're spending 200 bucks a week with internet. Like, where are they going to go for that? So I right. think it's, it's a win-win, like low Definitely. income housing with much higher cash on cash return. Right. So pad splits, huge, yeah. huge win for me. No, that's a huge gold nugget, especially, you know, if you got a house and you know, the rents aren't quite matching, um, but the interest rates are now and then, right. Uh, yeah. So instead of like acquiring more, I'm mm-hmm. converting, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't want to go buy new stuff at today's interest rates. So I'm converting old stuff. Right. And, um, gosh, what was the other thing I was going to say on that? Uh, I, don't know, I lost my mind, man. There was something on there. Oh, and then if you cost segregate, like I do cost segregation, massive tax increase mm. so the more windows walls and wires you have and if you do cost sag uh huge benefit so it'll up my tax depreciation per property from like 20 grand to 33 grand wow. so you get a huge tax bump um, on the depreciation because of all those added walls and windows so that's awesome man. that's some great tips yeah I, mean, I love it man thank you so much for coming on i don't want to take too much of your time so you guys can get over to disney and enjoy your, that. your weekend um what um if somebody says hey yeah, i love what you're doing it's super interesting i want to get involved with you or, or learn learn more about dave and connect with you um what's the best way for them to do that yeah uh leverage agent so l-e-v-e-r-a-g-e no d leverageagent.org they can book a time they can see what i'm doing book a time on there dude i'll get my cell phone if somebody just wants to hit me up and say no i don't want to book a calendar event you know, my cell is 480-332-6468. If you Google Dave Z, Dave Zajinski, you should generally find me. But yeah, man, that's my passion is 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 helping people unlock lock some leverage and go live the life they want to live now. Hey, this is Kai Logue. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I truly appreciate you. If you want more of this information and you want to see these actually recorded live, go ahead, join our Facebook group. It's the Real Estate Wholesaling Syndicate. It's right on Facebook. Google it, you'll find it. Type it on Facebook, you'll find it. I look forward to seeing you guys in there. We give a ton of free information in there, a bunch of free trainings, free courses. You get all the scripts, contracts, everything you need, A to Z, absolutely free. And I look forward to seeing you all in the group.